In this program, we'll look at the technical changes for the 1990 model year, with the exception of the R129, which has been covered separately. We'll start with the model lineup, changes on the M103 engine, the automatic transmission, electrical system changes, and conclude with a brief introduction to the new 4MATIC four-wheel drive system. The 1990 model line includes the following new vehicles. The 300CE with the new M104 twin cam six-cylinder engine, the 300E formatic, the 300TE formatic, the 300SL, the 500SL, and scheduled for mid-year introduction, the W124 300D 2.5 turbo, the W126 350 SD turbo, and the 350 SDL turbo. Incidentally, these three diesel models will not be available in California. The 190D 2.5 and the 560 SL have been discontinued. Also, the 124-260E has been reclassified as the 300E 2.6. Let's begin by looking at the changes to the M103 engine. The cylinder head now has a roof-style combustion chamber, and the pistons feature a dish shape to complement the new combustion chamber. Revised camshaft timing provides a smoother engine idle. The camshaft is made of chilled cast iron. The rocker arms have brazed on hardened metal wear surfaces for improved life. The addition of an air injection pump necessitated modification of the cylinder head in order to supply combustion air to the exhaust ports. Now, let's look at some of the changes to the fuel and exhaust emission systems. The CISE 5 control unit, referred to as N3 in the literature, now features onboard diagnostics with a fault memory. Among other things, the control unit is responsible for the automatic transmission shift point delay, which we'll look at shortly, air injection, EGR control, and data exchange with the EZL ignition unit. The CISE5 control unit has a 55-pin connector that is fastened with a spring tension clamp. Also, the M103 now uses an MAS control unit, referred to in the literature as N16. The MAS controls the fuel pump relay, the AC compressor, oxygen sensor heating, air injection, and the RPM limiter, which governs the engine to approximately 6,450 RPM. When you're troubleshooting, it's important to remember not to disconnect the battery before recalling a fault code. Otherwise, the codes may be erased. Also, be sure to call up all fault codes before you start any repairs. Otherwise, you run the risk of putting a false malfunction signal into the system. The air injection system has a self-test cycle that operates the air pump for five seconds after each startup, only when the vehicle is stationary, the engine is idling at operating temperature, and the lambda control is operating. Problems in the system will be stored in the CISE 5 control unit and can be recalled with the impulse counter. The exhaust gas recirculation valve is opened by the Y27 switchover valve, which is controlled by the CISE5 control unit. EGR is provided when the coolant temperature is above 60 degrees Celsius, the potentiometer voltage at the airflow sensor is greater than 2 volts, the full load contact is open, or if the idle contact is open. Just as we saw with the air injection, the CISE 5 control unit checks the EGR and stores system faults in memory. 
And like the CIS E5 control unit, the MAS unit has diagnostic capability with memory that can be accessed at the X114 connector. It will check the following. Fuel pump relay operation, the TN signal, the heated oxygen sensor, the air pump, the kick down switch, the AC compressor engagement signal, and finally, the MAS can recognize a short in the fuel pump electrical circuit. The EZL electronic ignition has been modified in order to provide for an exchange of data with the CISE 5 control unit. Information on coolant temperature, intake air temperature, and intake manifold pressure can now be shared by EZL and CISE 5. For the 1990 model year, all engines will use a four-pole coolant temperature sensor. Two separate temperature sensors are shared by the CISE 5 and the EZL. Vehicles equipped with a manual transmission now use a new twin mass spring dampened flywheel for smooth operation. The splined fitting for the new clutch disc is nickel plated so you don't need to lubricate the input shaft splines on the transmission. In order to get the catalytic converter quickly up to operating temperature, at light throttle when the engine is cold, the 2-3 shift will occur later. This delayed 2-3 upshift feature is on all models except those powered by the M104, which are the 300 CE and the 300 SL. The delay switchover valve, referred to in the literature as Y32, is mounted here, on the driver's side of the transmission. The Y32 valve is connected to the governor circuit. When activated, it bleeds off governor pressure, and this delays the 2-3 shift. Delayed 2-3 shifting will occur when engine coolant temperature is below 60 degrees Celsius. Again, the purpose of the shift delay is to get the catalytic converter to warm up faster in order to reduce exhaust emissions. The transmission in the 300 CE has an overload protection feature, which incidentally is shared with the 300 SL and 500 SL. The purpose of the overload protection system is twofold. First, it protects the clutches and bands from thermal overload. And second, it improves the quality of full throttle shifting. In order to accomplish these goals, the ignition timing is retarded for about 400 milliseconds on the one, two, and 2-3 shifts when the engine speed is over 4,000 RPM. Overload protection is integrated into the ignition control unit and is activated after receiving a signal from the S65 switch in the transmission. You should be aware of an important change in the design of the alloy wheels beginning with the 1990 model year. The new wheels do not have fins on the inside of the rim. This small change means you cannot put a pre-1990 model year wheel on a 1990 vehicle because there'll be insufficient clearance inside the rim. The 124 series vehicles have a new feature that makes it possible for you now to close the windows and sliding roof by holding the key over in the locked position. You can do this from either front door or the trunk. To stop the closing process, simply release the key. If you wish to continue closing after having stopped, you must first turn the key to the unlocked position and then back to the locking position. The control unit for this system is located here, under the rear seat cushion. The window switches now have a one touch down feature.
Beginning with the 1990 model year, all radios will be equipped with anti-theft encoding. There's a special code number for each radio, which will be written on a data card that accompanies the radio. Before we conclude, let me give you a brief overview of the new Formatic Automatic Four-Wheel Drive System used on the 300E Formatic and the 300TE Formatic models. The Formatic system engages itself automatically according to road conditions without the need for any input at all from the driver. Under normal driving conditions, the engine's power is transferred to the road surface by the rear wheels, just like it is with any rear wheel drive vehicle. But with the Formatic, engine power can be supplied to the front wheels as well. When the Formatic is engaged, it will operate three steps. Step one is always engaged every time you move off from a stop, regardless of road conditions. In step one, 65% of the engine's power is transferred to the rear wheels and 35% is transferred to the front wheels. The purpose of step one is to ensure traction when starting off. Under normal road conditions, step one will be disengaged as soon as you're underway. If necessitated by road conditions, Formatic will automatically shift into step two, which locks the center differential and provides a 50% power split between the front and rear wheels. And under road conditions requiring extreme traction, Formatic will engage step three. Step three not only locks the center differential, it also locks the rear differential as well. Looking inside the vehicle, you'll notice that the Formatic system has two indicator lights. The first is the malfunction indicator in the instrument cluster. Its purpose is to inform you of a fault in the system. The second light is the function indicator located here in the speedometer face. It'll light to inform you that Formatic has engaged and that you should adjust your driving to take such road conditions into account. By the way, since Formatic always starts off in step one, there is no need for the light to come on during a start off on a normal road surface. The Formatic system can be divided into electronic, hydraulic, and mechanical components. The electronic components supply information on road conditions. They include the front and rear axle speed sensors, the steering angle sensor, and the Formatic electronic control unit. The hydraulic components provide the muscle to engage the transfer case and the differentials. The hydraulic components include the oil reservoir, the hydraulic pump, the service valve, and the valve control unit. The mechanical components include the transfer case, the propeller shaft for the front wheel drive, the front axle differential and front axle shafts and the locking rear differential. The service valve is located here. By lifting the lever to the test position, the formatic system is disengaged. You would select this position when running the vehicle on a dyno, for example. Be sure to seat the lever completely when you want to re-engage the formatic. To avoid damage caused by a lack of lubrication, never exceed 15 minutes on the dyno. A future Education for Excellence program will take an in-depth look at formatic theory, diagnosis, and repair. And please, take a couple of minutes to fill out the postage paid card which came with this tape and drop it in the mail to us. Thanks.